Ah, this is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, higher class growers, we're gonna be yapping a little bit about cold water aquaponics, right? And right now, we need some cold weather. It's hot right now in Central Florida, about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's 35 degrees Celsius, right? It's burning up out here. The middle of the summer, I need me a bigger hat. You know, it's 50, you know, 50 percent shade cloth right now, and it's still beaming. I feel like I'm about to sweat, you know, sweating through this shirt right now. So, cold weather and cold water sounds like a good thing right now. So, before we get into what we're talking about, I want to thank you guys out there for liking the video subscribing to the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you guys out there, right? So let's jump into the topic of the day and see what we're gonna be yapping about. This question here comes from Hannon. What's going on, Hannon? It says, yo, BK, A God, spit some fire here. My question is about freezing cold winter. That is the only reason that I have not built an aquaponics system yet. Do you have a series of videos for winter aquaponics? All right, Hannon. So to answer your question, I do not have a series of videos right now on winter aquaponics. Um, and I'm assuming where you live at is probably going to be a temperate zone or a, um, a polar climate, right? So you're going to have either, you know, mild, summers or you're going to have extreme winters and you said it's freezing cold so maybe you do live in a you know a place where the winters are very very cold you know where i build my aquaponic systems at you know starting off in camp pendleton california or oceanside california um that was pretty much where i built my well actually temecula that's where we built it at it was temecula when i was in the marine corps um temecula is where i built it and over there is hot burning up 29 Palms, I built another system there, which is not too far from there. That's desert, hot, burning up. Durham, North Carolina, I built some more aquaponic systems there. The, uh, the winters are mild, didn't really have to worry too much about, you know, freezing cold. Although uh, cooling or heating is still something that I had to factor in. And then here in Central Florida, you know, here we have mild winters, you know, and very hot summers. So heating is something that, you know, it's definitely that something that I have to keep in mind, but it's not a big aspect of the operation here. You, on the other hand, it sounds like you, you know, you probably live in one of those areas where the heating is going to be a major aspect of your operation. And this is something very important to understand and to fact, factor in before you operate, you know, or build a system. So um, what I suggest is I have a resource here from some guys who actually have a commercial setup with a cold water uh, application for aquaponics, right? And it's a book called The Aquaponic Farmer by Adrian Southern and Wilm King, right? This here, these guys here are located in British Columbia up there in Canada, and they run a cool water aquaponic system. And this book is dedicated to cool water um, or cold water um, aquaponics. Now, the system that they developed or they, or they built is modeled after the UVI system, the University of Virgin Islands system, which that system is pretty much the template for, you know, the vast majority of commercial growers that are operating using a, a, um, a floating raft system. But what they did is they did do some modifications to it. They took out the old clarifier or the old um, primary uh, solids removal um, uh, device and they replace that with a radial flow filter, which is a good upgrade, right? When you read uh, the book Recirculating Aquaculture, um, it tells you that that re, uh, the radial flow filter, that one is pretty much the most effective um, gravity uh, solids removal component. You know, if you're, you're operating your system and you're uh, relying on gravity filtration, that's going to be probably the most effective opposed to like a swirl filter or the, the, the conventional clarifier. Right, so that was a good upgrade that, that, that they made. Also, what they did on that system is that they added um, additional biological uh, filtration. Right, they added an MBBR, 
or they call it a filter box, which combined the MBBR, the moving bed bioreactor with like a mesh filter. They combined it together in one box to add more biological uh, filtration. Because one thing you have to know about cold water, when you're dealing with cold temperatures, especially when you're going below 77 degrees Fahrenheit, I think that's around like 22 Celsius, the nitrification begins to slow down. That process begins to slow down the lower you go on the temperature, uh, the temperature range, right? So you could be uh, uh, pumping in a lot of ammonia. And for you guys that don't know, the nitrification is when you're, you know, your ammonia being oxidized to nitrite and then oxidized to nitrate. It's that process in there, removing that, um, those toxic um, compounds. So what, you, what they're factoring is, in is with those lower temperatures, because the bacteria, they kind of get lazy, right? They don't want to, uh, you know, they don't want to uh, reproduce as fast. They're factoring that in and they're adding additional biofiltration to make up for that, right? For those slower rates. So that's one aspect that they added in, into that. And when you look at other filters, like for, uh, for example, a bead filter, which has biofiltration as well, that's um, a part of that um, component. When, you, when they size that as well, there's a size for warm water application and then, you know, your cool water application is going to be a different size. So certain filters, you know, handle different um, ammonia loads depending on if it's a warm water application or if it's a cold water application. So that is something that is factored in, right? And in that system that they have in this book, right, they use uh, rainbow trout. Right. That's what they're using, which is a, you know, a cold water fish. And they maintain the, uh, the water temperature in there from 15 to 17 degrees Celsius, which is about 59 to 63 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where they keep it in. And so they have to heat. Right. Because of those lower um, temperatures that they experience. I think in the book it talks about they have the experience temperatures on the low end of negative 15 degrees Celsius, which is about five degrees Fahrenheit. And that's well below freezing, right? Freezing is about 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. So in order to keep that temperature up, because although the trout, they're cold water fish, they still thrive in a certain water uh, um, a temperature, right? Within a certain water temperature and it can't be too low or the fish won't eat. They'll get lazy just like the bacteria, right? They'll get very lazy. So that in order to keep that water temperature up, they add a heat pump in there, right? They had it add a heat pump in there. I think they get it. It's a, a heat pump that comes from the, um, the swimming pool industry. I think that's what they mentioned in there that they, that they get it from that industry, right? They add it in there and that's to keep that, that temperature pretty much maintained, you know, uh, uh, throughout a, a good portion of the year, right? In order to keep the metabolism of those, those rainbow trout up so they can, when they feed the fish will eat, and then produce the waste that you need in order to supply your plants, right? So that's one thing that they do in there. So this is a good reference right here. Bring it out again, the aquaponic farmer, right? This is a good reference. Now, this is, like I said, this is for a commercial system here. If you don't have a commercial system and you're gonna be doing like some cold water, you know, aquaponics, you could just take what you need out of here, modify it, you know, modify some of the, um, the, the production methods that they have in here, modify it to your, you know, your, um, your scale. And then, you know, that'll work better for you. Or you can keep it the same if, if you find out that it works, you know, um, fine for you. Another thing, let me not forget, another thing that they mention in here is the feeding rate, right? For a traditional UVI setup um, or a traditional floating raft setup, I should say, the feeding rate, um, is 60 to 100 grams of feed per square meter of plant growing area supplied per day, right? That is the traditional feeding rate, you know, and that'll supply a variety of uh, vegetables, lettuce, all the way up to your tomatoes. In this book, what they did was they, they said that, the, um, that they didn't need to use such a high feeding rate. They had to reduce the feeding rate right from the 60 to 100 grams down to about 25 to 35 grams of feed per square meter of growing space uh, per day. So that was a big, 
modification that they made in there. So that's one other thing that I had to point out. And they said that they had to, to change it because of the nutrient uptake by the plants. In cold water, right, they're saying that the nutrients are taken up uh, 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 less in cold water by the plants, right? They're not taking up nutrients as fast. So they're supplying the nutrients at a lower rate in order to compensate for that nutrient uptake. So that's another thing that has to be considered. Now, um, other than that, I haven't seen any other research on that, but you know, I'm just going off of what they said on their particular system. And I guess it's been running for some time and I'm assuming that they're doing authentic aquaponics. I always have to make that a mention and it appears that they are. So I have to make that a mention, meaning that they're using the vast majority of the fish waste to supply the plant uh, uh, nutrient requirements. I always have to bring that out because it's going to be different if someone's just, sub, you know, you're just using a small amount of your fish weight and supplementing with hydroponic nutrients, right? That's not, you know, that's not going to be, you know, the same aquaponic method that I'm discussing. So I always got to bring that out and make sure that that is known. And it appears that that's what they're doing in there. So they have a lower feeding rate due to the cold water and the nutrient uptake of the plant. So that's what I would suggest, you know, look into this as a reference and um, as a good starter reference and, you know, see what you can take out of there and apply to your system. Right. So hopefully this has helped you out, Hannon. And that anyone else out there that is doing cold water aquaponics could use this as some type of reference, you know, to help you out. Right. So if any of you guys have other questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to add that to the queue and see what we can bring out in the high class growers community. Right. If you need more help with aquaponics, click on the link below, get you a free aquaponic starter guide and a free aquaponic uh, course and enroll in the school of aquaponics. Right. So with that being said, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the school of aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car. <laughs>